video we'll be watching a brief overview of the Decimation Master plugin for ZBrush. Decimation Master will allow you to highly optimize the poly count in your mesh while allowing you to maintain a high level of detail. There are many different benefits and uses for this type of optimization. Decimation Master is being used by many game companies to optimize game assets. You can also use Decimation Master as a way to export your model at a low enough poly count that other 3D programs can handle. Therefore, you can render that 3D model with all the ZBrush detail intact without the need of a normal or displacement map. And another area where this optimization process can be utilized is in the world of 3D printing. Many 3D printing companies can only accept a certain size poly count. Decimation Master, of course, will allow you to get your poly count in your model down to a printable level while maintaining all of the detail. So now that we've talked about some of the uses for Decimation Master, let's take a look at some of its options and features. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using a model provided by ZBrush artist Damien Kunderle. And you can see that this model is made up of three separate subtools, the eyes and teeth, the head of the character, and the sculpted clothing. Before we start anything with the decimation process, we're going to want to make sure that all of our subtools have a unique name. So if you take a look at the subtools I have here in the subtool palette, the head and the clothing area of the model are actually the same name. So I'll just simply click on the clothing subtool and go down to rename and I'll rename this jacket so that each one of my subtools is uniquely named and then I'll hit OK. Another step that you can take at this stage is masking off specific areas of your model. And the reason you'll do that is masking specific areas will exclude those areas from the decimation process. Now even though Decimation Master does a phenomenal job at lowering the poly count of your model while maintaining all the details, there are some fine scratches or wrinkles that you may want to isolate and make sure that they're not decimated so they're absolutely preserved. So what we can do is taking our masking options and just mask off these specific areas around the eye, maybe these wrinkles right here in the forehead, we want them to absolutely be maintained. And what's great about this process is that all of the masking options that you have available to you in the mask subpalette uh, will be affected by the decimation process. So I can blur my mask or I can change my mask intensity and that will have an effect over the decimation. If my mask is at 100%, that area won't be touched or I can lower the mask quite a bit. So our controls for Decimation Master are going to be in the Z Plugs palette and of course under the Decimation Master pull down. The first option I'd like to discuss is the Freeze Borders option. And by checking this, essentially what you're doing is making sure that Decimation Master preserves the border edges on your model. So you can see right here in the neck, we have a border edge. And if we wanted this neck to fit perfectly with a sculpted piece of a body that we had, we don't want this area to be affected by the decimation process. So Freeze Borders will assure that the area around this border edge will be perfectly preserved. Underneath freeze borders we have the keep UVs option which does exactly what it sounds like. It keeps the UVs during the decimation process. So now that we've uniquely named all of our subtools, created any masks that we like to preserve detail on our model, and chosen our freeze borders or keep UVs, there's two pre-processing stages I'd like to explain to you. Pre-process current and pre-process all. Pre-process current is essentially going to pre-process the currently selected subtool, where pre-process all is going to process all the visible subtools that you have for this ZBrush model. So because we have the jacket visibility turned off, it won't be included in this pre-process stage. So with the head subtool selected, I'll simply click pre-process current, and you can see the progress bar show up here in the Decimation Master subpalette. Now the pre-process stage is going to be the longest part of decimation. Now the reason for that is, is because Decimation Master is calculating the decimation of the model from 0 to 100. So all of this information is going to be saved in a temporary file. So once we're done with this pre-process, we can choose different decimation levels at any point from 0 to 100 and quickly decimate the model. So now the pre-process has finished, I'd like to point out one other feature that you'll notice here in the tool palette. 
Because Decimation Master has been loaded, you'll notice that you have a new option here, which is Clone All Subtools. And this is just an option that you can use to basically clone all the subtools that you have for the current ZBrush model. That way you are decimating one and then keeping a complete original copy of your model. So I'll just go ahead and, and click that option now, and you'll notice that now I have two separate models with all the intact subtools. So now we can start our decimation process and you'll notice that we have a decimate current and a decimate all just like we had pre-process current in pre-process all and they work essentially the same way. Decimate current will affect the current selected subtool and then decimate all will affect all visible subtools. We can use this slider to change the percentage of decimation that we will apply to the model. So for instance, if I typed in 10%, we would then decimate the model down to 10% of its original poly count. We can also set exact poly count numbers or exact vertice numbers with the two additional sliders that we have under the decimation percentage. Now that I've chosen the decimation value, I'll hit decimate current, which will decimate the current selected subtool. And you can see now that the decimation actually took place quite quickly because of the pre-process that we did earlier. Our decimated subtool is now coming in at 130,000 polygons, where the original was at 1.3 million polygons. So let's take a moment to examine our decimated model. And at first glance, we can see almost no change to the model or the detail and overall structure. If we zoom in very, very close to specific areas, we might see some minute changes. But of course, this is all affected by the decimation percentage that you chose before you decimated the model. The areas that we took the time to mask off earlier have been fully protected. If we take a look at the wireframe here, you can see that the poly count in those areas have been completely preserved and none of the details have been affected at all. But if we just take a look at the model as a whole, you can see that the detail in comparison to the 1.3 million polygon model is almost identical and very, very hard to see any differences between 1.3 million and 130,000 as I switch between the two models here in our scene. So that's all you really need to know to start decimating models using Decimation Master. There's a couple preferences I'd like to point out here in the preference palette underneath the Decimation Master pulldown. The first option is Uniform Mesh. When using Decimation Master, you essentially have two styles of decimation that can take place with Uniform Mesh on or off. And you're usually going to want to keep this on because it's likely that it will give you the best result. But I just wanted to point out that it was here and it can be turned off. Number of threads has to do with your computer and your processor and what you take advantage of. Underneath that, we have Delete Cache at Startup, which will delete that temporary pre-process file I talked about earlier. You're going to want to make sure that you click the Save Preferences underneath that, though, because the preferences here in the Decimation Master are not linked to your regular UI preferences here inside ZBrush. The last two options you have here in the Decimation Master Preference pulldown is Keep and Use Poly Paint and a Poly Paint Weight Slider. Now, what the Poly Paint Weight Slider is going to affect is how the poly paint on the surface of your model will affect the decimation process. If I were to turn this slider all the way down to zero, then none of the poly paint will influence my decimation. Or if I were to turn this all the way up to 100, then all of the poly paint that I have placed on the model will have influence over the type and amount of decimation that takes place on the model. So finally, you can see over here on the left, underneath the Decimation Master pulldown, we have Export All Subtools. And this will take all your subtools and export them as one unique OBJ, which is different than the Export option here in the tool palette. So thank you for taking the time to watch this introduction to Decimation Master, a mesh optimization plugin for ZBrush. I know that you'll enjoy the speed and power Decimation Master brings to your workflow.